Previously on the Ron Van Dam Show. I'm going to just not use entire words, so this is awful too. Why? I don't know why I'm telling you this story. There's no reason for it whatsoever. Let's move on. And now, today's episode. On the air everywhere, this is New England Broadcasting. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Oh, not again. Hold on tight, things can get a bit weird, if you like that sort of thing. Welcome to the program. It is the Ron Van Dam Show. Uh, thanks for being here today. Uh, you didn't have to do this. No one forces you to do these things. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Whatever happened during it is not my fault. Hope you enjoyed your turkey, if that's what you had. Um, enjoyed the company of friends and family, if that's what you could endure. Great. Great. Good for you. Good good for you. Oh, oh, good for you. All right. Um, it's the day after. Um, remember that song, uh, There Has to Be a Morning After? It was uh, the theme song of the Poseidon Adventure. You don't remember that? Do you know who I am? Do you know where you are? Okay. Okay. Hope you got many nice presents yesterday at Thanksgiving. Oh, that's right. That's Christmas. I'm getting my holidays confused. There are so many of them. I remember when I was going to school, it was quite some time ago, we didn't have any holidays. We didn't. There was Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter. That's it. We didn't have holidays for things. Now, children, they, they're, they're home more than they go to school. Homeschooled has nothing to do with it. There's no school. You got to be home. Everything's a holiday. Oh, Bobby broke his arm. National holiday. It's a national holiday now. National Bobby broke his arm day. Everybody stays home. I don't understand it. Public school kids, they have a winter recess. They have a, a spring recess. They have a, after you would go to the dentist recess. What's all these recesses? School is nothing but a recess. Then I went to college. Oh, man. That started late and ended early. College was over by like, uh, I don't know, March. (laughs) It It was ridiculous. Paying all this money. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's. I was watching a television commercial yesterday for New Hampshire, uh, Southern New Hampshire University. I'm not downing the thing. I don't know anything about it. I just see their commercials. It's a little disappointing. I started talking about this yesterday on the program or the day before, I should say. In the commercial, you have these people who look like they really can't afford an education. They, they, They don't look, you know. Uh, they don't look like they have rich parents. Let's put it like that. So you see them uh, taking an envelope and sitting on the couch with their friends and family around them, and they open up the envelope, and this gigantic smile comes on the, the, the face of the person opening the envelope, and they unfold this piece of paper, and they hold it up so that everybody in the family can see it's a, <laughs> it's a diploma from uh, the Southern New Hampshire uh, University or whatever. And they're all elated. Oh, my God, you're a college graduate. Look, you got it in the mail, uh, the, the, the diploma. And then I'm, I'm looking at this diploma on the television screen. It looks like something somebody went down to Staples and had it printed up. I mean, it's, oh, I don't know. This whole college thing is just, I, I don't understand it. I don't get it. What's this further education crap? Why don't you just not end school at the 12th grade? Go on to 14. 
Call it a day. Nobody goes to college. Let's have a good day. Unless you're going to be a surgeon, then I want you going to college for the rest of your life. A surgeon or a doctor or a lawyer, you people got to go because there's a lot to learn. Other than that, come on. Seriously, come on. <sighs> Lord. Anyway, I hope you had a nice Thanksgiving. I hope the turkey is damn happy with what you did with it. We all have leftovers now. We'll have leftovers until uh, 2027. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's going to be a lot of leftovers here. And uh, you have to get creative with the turkey leftovers. You get uh, a piece of uh, a metal or perhaps uh, a very strong uh, twine. And uh, you take the turkey and you hang it from your ears. They make lovely earrings. It stinks after a couple of days, but still, you're using the leftovers. If you have a draft coming through the door into your apartment or into your house, um, instead of buying that expensive weather stripping, just take a few slices of that leftover turkey and cram it under the door frame. And you'll stop that cold air from coming in. Again, it's only good for a few days before everything starts stinking really bad and all the insects gather around the house saying, hey, look, they're stuffing food on the floor. Let's go get them. Other than that, you know, if you have a cat or a dog, that doesn't work either. Have you ever tried making a turkey sweater? It's not a bad idea. They make sweaters out of everything. Why not a turkey sweater? By the way, who came up with the concept of the ugly Christmas sweater thing? What what happened there? How did that become a thing? Somebody put on a really ugly Christmas sweater, and I guess nobody told that person to take it off. You look stupid. Instead, it started a craze and a competition and something that people do on purpose. What? You look ridiculous. I know. I'm dressing like this on purpose. Why? I don't know. I. Uh, it's a thing. You're stupid. You're, you're stupid. Thank God they didn't start, uh, start the uh, streaked, ripped underpants thing. Hey, hey, what is what is that? It's a thing. It's the ugly underpants thing. Oh, my God. What's wrong with you? Hey, work for sweaters. Anyway, I have an interesting guest uh, today. It's going to be an extended interview because it's the day after Thanksgiving, and I'm kind of really tired. So uh, I don't want to talk for a whole half hour, if you don't mind. But we do have an interesting, uh, some guests that have actually agreed to come on the program today. They have written a book about your brain. Yeah, It's about your brain, not mine. And the book is called Override. And uh, what it does is it explains that uh, we're all different brain-wise. Like, like, you know, we're all different personality-wise. It's formed in the brain. It's all up there in 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 your noggin head thing. It's the amount of chemicals that you have in your brain that makes us all different, like blood types, you know what I mean? Similar to that, not the same, similar though. Your personality type is is how you're wired in your brain. Oh, well, that's depressing. Can I change that? It doesn't sound like I can. What are you going to do, place electrodes on my head like, like Frankenstein's monster? By the way, the monster was not named Frankenstein. Frankenstein was the scientist. This was Frankenstein's monster. That's why history is all wrong. Anyway, um, no, that's not how they do it. I guess you can you can learn to change your your brain. Um, if that's the case, a lot of people I know have a lot of work to do. Uh, oh, man. You know, the holiday brings out uh, verbal diarrhea. Do you know what that is? It's people who just can't stop talking. They love to hear themselves talk. And they assume that whatever they say, you have 
unyielding interest in. They are so wrong. Uh, don't feed into them. If someone just keeps talking and talking and talking and talking, and these people pop up during the holiday season, by the way, they're usually relatives that you realize why you haven't spoken to them in such a long time. And, oh, that's why I don't like you. Now I remember you never shut up. There's a lot of people that just love to hear themselves talk. They do it for different reasons. Sometimes they're very lonely and they have no one else to talk to. And once they get a, a, a target, they just go after it. So, I mean, you know, it's not you. Well, it is you, actually. And they find you to be a target of conversation. It's not a conversation. It's a, it's a monologue, like what I'm doing. Oh, but these verbal diarrhea people, man, and I, you know, you can't tell them to shut up because then they'll, they, cause they don't understand. They have no filter. They, they, they can't look in a mirror and see their personality. They, they think they're ultimately fascinating. Whatever they do, whatever they did with their dog or whatever they had for dinner last night is ultimately fascinating to everybody on the planet. And you know, it's not, you know, it can't be. And then as soon as you open your mouth in order to tell uh, a a return story, they cut you off and go into another one of their stories. These are people that are annoying. And you can't tell them to shut up. It's just just rude. And if you ever went to church, you, you know you can't do that. So here's what you do. And it's what I do. And when I do it, you'll know that I don't want to listen to you anymore. I simply say, hey, I got a busy day. I got to run. That's all. That's all. Hey, I got a busy day. I got to run. Hey, I got a lot to do today. I got to cut you short. I mean, I got to go. And by the way, when somebody says, um, uh, well, long story short, if, if they start that with that phrase, you know, it's not going to be shortened at all. You're going to get the elongated version. It, it appears that they know that they talk too much when they say that. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what happened to me. Well, long story short, you, you know, when they say that, they know that they go on and on. That's when they have self-awareness. But as soon as they say that, all that self-awareness goes out the window and they tell you the long version of the story because there is no other version. It's always long. There's no short version. They have no respect for your time nor your sanity, but they don't know. They know not what they do. I think we all know people like that. You could be a person like that, but you don't even realize it, do you? But we all know somebody like that. You know, you get a phone call and you pick up the phone. Hello, you know, caller. You didn't check your caller ID. Uh, you know, you just picked it up, uh, the phone, uh, and it's uh, and you're oh no, it's oh no, oh no, it's it's her. Oh no, it's him. Oh oh, I don't have time for this. Oh oh, um, look, I'd love to talk to you, but I've got another call coming in. That's a good one. Uh, You can just press a little button on your phone and make a little beep and it'll sound like there's a call coming in. It's really simple to do. And these people who talk a lot, they don't know what the hell's going on anyway. They, they, They can't figure that out. They're too involved in their own story and in their own life. They, they don't, they can't figure out that you're trying to get out of there really bad. All right. Uh, My guest is going to join us momentarily, but uh, before that, we're going to take a very short commercial break, and uh, then at that point, we'll be uh, speaking to a couple of doctors. Yeah, how often does that happen? Uh, Not one, but two, and we'll do that right after these words. First, they put jalapenos on your hamburger, but that wasn't hot enough. Then came habaneros, but still, that wasn't hot enough. Next came the ghost pepper, and still, that was not hot enough for you. Well, buckle up, tough guy, because Burger Guy thinks you're not man enough to handle the heat of our new sweet flaming mother of heaven. What the f*** did you assholes do to my hamburger burger? Featuring two of Burger Guy's signature paper-thin patties topped with an experimental hot sauce made from a concentrated hot pepper extract that has only been approved for military use by North Korea. This burger will burn a hole through every inch of your intestines and then slap your mama on its way out for good measure. This burger is so hot they wouldn't let us test it on prisoners. Death Row 
prisoners. But for a limited time, you can try your luck at your local burger guy. If you're not a complete pussy. All purchases of the sweet flaming mother of heaven, what the f did you assholes do to my hamburger burger, must be pre-approved by a certified attorney at law with proper notification of next of kin. Sweet flaming mother of heaven, what the f did you assholes do to my hamburger burger, must not be consumed within 500 yards of schools or within 1,000 yards of open flame. All burger guy franchisees reserve the right to ignore cries for mercy or requests for immediate medical attention. Physician Dr. David Kipper and psychologist Dr. Connell Cowan joins us now. They are both uh, doctors of, of great... Uh, recognition uh, in the field and uh, have some interesting information for us. Thank you for being with us today and especially so early in the morning. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. This is a, this is a book that uh, I think it's second only to the Bible right now. It's called, it's called Override and it's about uh, discovering your brain type and what to do about it, how to, uh, with that understanding, how to make things better in a world of great confusion. Um, I assume that this book was was in process before things were getting crazy. It was in process before things were getting crazy, but then things got really crazy <laughs> and amplified it amplified everything that we're writing about, uh, which is uh, how we respond to stress, and you know. <laughs> As you know, you know all the markers of stress. Stress are, you know, pretty much end. You know, with uh, domestic violence up, alcohol consumption up. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's we're a stressed out nation. We are. Um, you know, as as stressful as things are, I I think back in history. Not that I was around. I mean, I'm I'm old, but not that old. And I remember, uh, oh my God, there were like wars taking place in in, in everybody's backyard. Uh, there was uh, there were people were being beheaded. Uh, I mean, things things were not great. There were plagues, as we had one recently, but even worse uh, back then. I mean, there was a lot of stress back then, but I guess we just didn't recognize it, what it was. We certainly have the pandemic to thank for a lot of that, but we also are going into a season, this holiday season, that has its own intrinsic stressors, so yeah. the timing of our conversation is, is even okay. better. All right. um, it, just as one knows their, their own blood type uh, and their own baggage from their history, I guess uh, the brain type makes a difference in, in how you handle and cope, is that true? Oh, it makes a, a huge difference, uh, which is really interesting because that difference is not um, any acts of, of nature. Uh, the, the differences are really related to slight imbalances in our brain chemistry. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it uh, have slight balances on the uh, uh, arousal side, the stimulation side, which is fired by the primary, by the neurotransmitter dopamine. And other people are imbalanced on the calming side of the brain, uh, which is kind of ruled by serotonin. Yeah. And these imbalances change how you respond to the world in a very fundamental way. That's, that's uh, unconscious. It just, it just feels like how we are. So, it's not something we intend. It's something yeah. we've been from mom and dad. Yeah. Uh, but the serotonin imbalanced people tend to be cautious, uh, risk averse. Uh, they tend to be more avoidant. Right. Uh, whereas the people who are, have imbalanced dopamine tend to be uh, more outgoing, optimistic, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, uh, extroverted, uh, they're very risk tolerant. They can have impulse issues. So those fundamental differences are are uh, how we kind of function in the world. And these differences are are aggravated during stressful times. Yeah. Well, life is certainly easier when you don't care too much about anything. Uh, and I guess that's a that's a chemical deal too. I mean, I. Yeah, uh, if if you worry or care about everything, then it's not going to be an easy an easy trip, is it? The the differences also really give us the advantage 
for the book uh -huh. in that once we've identified these two types, yes. we're all on one type or the other. Right. This allows us to create some strategies that really? are very personalized, which is unusual to any other book that we've seen mm -hmm. in the past, which is why we wrote this book. So that if you know your brain type, if mm -hmm. you know where your intrinsic reflexes are, you can then create strategies to make these changes and the behaviors that you're not happy with. Does the book help you understand and actually make these changes? Because it's one thing to recognize it, it's another thing to do something about it. In the beginning of the book, you take a very simple test. And that will identify your specific brain type. Mm -hmm. From that test uh, and understanding your brain type, yes, you can then understand, as Dr. Cowan pointed out, if you are shy in stimulating transmitters, you're looking for stimulation. If you're shy in the calming transmitters, you're looking for calm. Mm -hmm. And those reflexes and very predictable behaviors allow us to sort of get in there to make these habitual changes so yes can can one in a in a milder sense uh can one actually uh change their their attitude and uh, i mean you can't change your brain type but i guess you can change how how it affects your 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 daily life but can one actually do that or does that require some type of medical attention or psychology no, what we what we've done in, in the book is to um, uh, really teach people how to leverage their brain chemistry. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what you said is absolutely true. We don't change our brain chemistry. You know, we're with whatever we've got, yeah. we're stuck with for the duration. Right. Uh, but you can learn to see the ways in which it pushes you around, mm. the behavior that it. it you from doing uh, uh, with any kind of ease comfort. Mm. It, it teaches you how to tolerate some of those discomforts uh, in in healthy ways. Yes. And and in, and in doing that, it, it expands the degrees of freedom you have. I mean, if you if you have uh, if you're shy of serotonin, one of the things that that people can be very vulnerable for is social anxiety. Uh, mm -hmm. ju just understanding that right. this is related to uh, a, a, a brain type and not a personal deficiency. People who have social anxiety feel inadequate. Yes, They feel terrible about themselves. So simply just the understanding of what it is gives someone a, a bit of a, le a leg up in, then, uh, in terms of dealing with it. But, but the strategies that we have in the book are really designed to uh, help people, you know, kind of overcome mm -hmm. uh, these things that are are uh, explicitly related to their brain chemistry. Mm. Um, I see television commercials and, and over the counter things and some medical prescriptions for actually adding some of these chemical components to your head uh, in order to make up the deficiencies. But you're saying that's not really necessary to go here, to go there. Actually, it's part of it. Oh. It, it's not the whole picture. Okay. So, for instance, you have a you have a child in a classroom that has ADHD, yep. and that kid is running all over the place, not focused. And why in the world would you give that kid a stimulant to make them normalize? Yes, true. The reason that they're running all over the room and they're not focused is that they are shy in their dopamine systems. They're shy and they're stimulating. <clears throat> Excuse me, and they're stimulating hormones. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so now you give them a stimulant, which is really just giving them dopamine. Yes. That's what Ritalin and Adderall and Dexedrine, this is what all these medications uh, provide. So you're raising uh, the level of their dopamine in the brain and they calm down. Mm -hmm. So those behaviors that were driven by the lack of dopamine are now treated in a functional way by giving them dopamine. So there is room for this when you have people that are depressed and are taking SSRI medicines like Prozac and Lexapro mm -hmm. and Zoloft. Those medicines are just providing serotonin. So pharmacologic support is very much part of the equation. 
But because we have evolved over many, many years, and these habits have evolved, we then need to do some behavioral therapies. Once we have you stabilized, once your, your brain chemistry is now rebalanced, mm -hmm. now you have to work on these habits. So it's a, it's a two-part equation. Wow. Um, I don't think I, I, you know, the only people that I know who aren't stressed out to the point where it doesn't affect their lives almost on a daily basis, again, are the people that just don't seem to know what's going on. I mean, it's, it just seems like the smarter you are, the more impressionably stressed you're going to be. Have you found that to be the case? Well, I, you know, I think, uh, you know, it, it's easy to kind of want to pull the covers over your head these yeah, days yeah. with what's going on. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I find, you know, the people who, uh, are kind of most awake, most tuned in, most, uh, you know, aware of what's going on, uh, uh they, they are upset. Yeah. But I mean, I think these are times, you know, where being upset is appropriate. I mean, it's the same way with anxiety. I mean, anxiety is is, yeah. is a terrible kind of physical symptom to have. But if you're having a big audit with the IRS and you're feeling anxious, that's yeah. an appropriate feeling. So, uh, I mean, stress. You know, nature gave us stress for a reason. Yeah. Uh, 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 it it gave us ability <clears throat> an ability to respond to threatening situations and what. What we're what we're seeing, you know, out there is, uh, you know, the they're real threatening situations that we're dealing with. So, so it's I think it's a normal response. Now, Very some good. people just, uh, you know, they 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 turn off the news cycle. Yes, they have ways that you know, get overwhelmed and 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 back away. I don't know that that's healthy. And, and also, I think that the the context of these changes apply on so many levels. They apply to all the relationships we have in our life and why we respond the way we do to right. other people's behavior, to our own behavior, and all these lifestyle issues about, you know, why why can't I lose weight? Why can't I get a better night's sleep? Uh, why, why do I fail at every exercise program I do? So I, I agree with you that there, I think there are some people that are not looking to fix the clock, but I think there are plenty of people out there that are on some level dissatisfied with the way they're living. Yeah. Um that was very effective what you what you just said that uh having anxiety or being concerned about something or feeling stress is not abnormal it's it's not an illness it is a natural reaction and there's no shame in feeling that that was an important thing to say i think i think people need to hear that well i i i, I agree i mean i think people are uh they're you know they're they're feeling out of control is basically mm -hmm. I, I think the the issue you know uncertainty um, breeds uh, uh, you know uh, you know come in kind of flag control issues for yes. people yes. and when you when you don't feel like you can uh, exercise real control yeah. over your true. your existence you know you, that gets flag. but but what <clears throat> what what Dr Kipper was was saying is that then in terms of you know, the book doesn't deal with the political situation the book is mm -hmm. a very is very focused on what you can do personally uh to uh, right. uh you know, make your life a little bit yes. more in control livable i mean <laughs> control is really the central aspect of the book mm -hmm. i mean the the uh you know what we try and give people are some very specific ways to uh, and give themselves more degrees of control and freedom that you know, that they haven't had before. Yeah, interesting. And it's a very it's a very new way to look at your behavior. It's yeah. a way that people have never really thought about before. And not only does it make sense, but it allows you not just to look at your own behavior, but at those people close to you and around you mm -hmm. uh, that may be behaving differently, maybe behaving exactly the same way. But it's it's sort of a fun way to assess yourself and, and give you some tools to make some changes. Now they always say that understanding yourself is, uh, is the first step to everything. And, uh, this book helps you do that. Uh, it's available everywhere. I assume. 
It is. It is. It better be, right? <laughs> yeah. And for your analogy about the Bible, I think soon it's going to be in every drawer in every hotel room. <laughs> you know, they don't have the Bibles in the hotel room anymore, so there is a space available for you. Oh, good. <laughs> good <timing. laughs> and with the cost of the hotel rooms, there should be override yeah. in every drawer. <laughs> that would help us cope with the bill. Um it's it is a fascinating book, and it's uh, it's it's time for it, and we appreciate uh, you doing this. Uh, is there a website that we can visit to get uh, do with some following in this day of social following stuff? Yeah, the website is overridebooks plural dot mm-hmm. com. Perfect, gentlemen. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time today. We really do. Well, that'll do it for me today. Thank you to my guests. I really appreciate your time today. I'll be back again on Monday with a brand new program. For those of you that are not interested, uh, (laughs) uh, I do this show every single weekday unless it's Thanksgiving or Christmas or Easter. Uh, Other than that, uh, you'll find me here wherever you found me. I'll be here. So, Monday, yes, okay, mark it on your calendar. Tell Alexa that you want to listen to me on Monday. You can listen to me, of course, through uh, Amazon Music and Spotify and Clavify and Packify and Shopify and Stitcher and uh, Pandora and uh, not not the jewelry company, the the music thing. Uh, TuneIn Radio, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, I, all that crap. Uh, until then, I wish you peace. Mm-hmm.